Welcome back to the Church and the Communion of Saints, our Acts topic for the January class. This is section three on attributes of the church. Now these should seem familiar to anyone who's attended an Anglican worship service and said the Nicene Creed. The attributes of the church as stated in the Nicene Creed are that the church is one, the church is holy, the church is Catholic, and the church is apostolic. So we will consider each of these in turn. The church is one. The church is a single unity. Its members are united through their union to Christ, which unites them one to another as well. The church is intended to be one in visible unity and in doctrine. Disunity in the church grieves the heart of God, and it should grieve our hearts as well. The only remedy to disunity is humble submission to Christ and to one another. Disunity is also an invitation to wolves to enter and take advantage of the sheep. When Christians disagree with one another and refuse to be in fellowship and communion, there is a grave danger that false teaching or those with a desire to prey upon uh, the weak among us will flourish. Humbleness and fellowship with other Christians can keep those wolves from infiltrating and wreaking havoc. Uh, the church being one is dear to the heart of God. Uh, we find that out um, in Jesus' great high priestly prayer when he prays that we all will be one. And I find that to me, I most often experience a love for Christ's body, for his church, uh, in singing. So I've chosen a hymn for each of the attributes. And the hymn I've chosen for the church's one is, Those who at thy first Eucharist did pray. Those words will be available, uh, the words of the text will be available to you uh, on the um, class notes. So I commend them to you highly. The second attribute of the church is that it is holy. God sanctifies the church. The church is comprised of those persons who have been washed in baptism and indwelt by the Holy Spirit. They have been set aside for God and for the body of Christ, which has been set aside for God. The church as a body is also indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Membership in the church is visible. One cannot be a member in the church by accident. Baptism is the entrance to the church, and it is an outward and visible sign of the inward and spiritual grace conveyed by that sacrament of washing and repentance. The members of the church are those who have been washed in water and sealed with the oil of chrism and marked as Christ's own forever. Christians are those who have cons consciously responded to the call of Jesus, or whose parents or guardians have made that response on their behalf, who will be that later be invited to confirm that response upon reaching maturity. For the church being holy, the hymn that I would commend to you is Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones. Uh, often the theology of the church is carried very strongly in our hymns, which is why it's important that we uh, choose hymns that are in accord with traditional theology and that we take seriously those words. Uh, singing is praying twice, as St. Augustine says. The church is also Catholic, a Catholic meaning according to the whole. There is a wholeness to the church that cannot be atomized into pieces, by individuals, or by doctrines. The church seeches, seeks to teach that which was taught everywhere, always, by everyone. This is called the Vincentian Canon, first expressed by St. Vincent of Lorraine in the early church period. A grave danger to the body of Christ is that some members will isolate themselves from the body at large, either through willful separation or ignorance. A central role that Christians who are blessed to be aware of the fullness of the body of Christ through time and space can play is in bringing this fullness to the attention of those who have forgotten or were never introduced to this fullness. Care must be taken to do so in a manner of humility and generosity. However, many heresies and difficulties of contemporary Christian condition stem from an insular view of Christian life. Humility is bred by learning about the variety of Christian life throughout the world and the history of the Christian people. Hopefully learning about the work of the Holy Spirit throughout the world and throughout history reveals to us what is shared among all Christians and what is particular to our own time and place or to the time and place of other Christians. For the church is Catholic, uh, the hymn that I've selected is the church's one foundation. The last uh, designation or attribute of the church is that it is apostolic. The church follows the teachings of the apostles. For Anglicans, this is most materially apparent in the person and ministry of the bishop. There is a direct line of laying on of hands from the time of the apostles through to our present bishop, which can be traced. One of the coolest things I've ever seen was a present given to Bishop John David at his retirement. It was a hand-drawn listing of all the links between himself 
and St. John the Divine, Bishop of Ephesus, from whose ministry he traces his, his episcopacy. A second element of apostolicity, which is even more important, is that the church of today teaches what was given to the apostles without addition or subtraction. As noted above, there is great variation in the expression of the gospel, but there must be no variation in its essence. There's a mystical, mysterious quality to the church. Like any good relationship, becoming the church takes work. Most of the work, of course, is done by the God through the washing of baptism and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in chrismation. But there are habits and practices that help us as individuals come into, into and inhabit the reality of the church. We'll talk about that in a later section. For the church is apostolic, the hymn I would suggest that you meditate on is Christ is made the sure foundation. Thank you.